And how did you find the experience of turning this one into an audio book? Oh, easy as always, Graham. It's always a pleasure. <laughs> Fires burned around Hennig. The air filled in equal parts with smoke and screams. The entire main boulevard was burning. The orange light of the flames glowing against the black of night. Hennig opened his deck box and held his hand out before him. Cards adding to the illumination. He looked down at the floating images, depictions of his magic made manifest. A selection of elemental creatures hovered by his pale, fleshy fingers. That wasn't right. Hennig shook his head, his long hair swishing as he did. He didn't have time to ponder what was happening. The city was under attack, and Hennig was sworn to protect it. He could worry about his personal circumstances later. Tracy Gregory, how are you? I'm good. Are you okay? Yeah, good. You still in Cardiff? Yes, yeah. Yeah, well, I think you'll be moving up in the world soon. Not that there's anything wrong with Cardiff, but because uh, these books are really something else, and they're really selling well, aren't they? You must be pleased. Oh, yeah, I am. I am. <laughs> Were you surprised a little bit as well? Yeah, I think you're always going to be surprised when something does well, right? You always kind of expect expect the best, but you never you never really think it's going to kind of go off like it does sometimes. Yeah, uh, but no, it's, it's it's always great to kind of see things be successful when you put them out there. Yeah, and this subgenre of this lit RPG is, is that the key to it? Do you think that 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 genre itself has a a fan base that's into these? I think it's I think it's because it's a growing genre, right? Kind right. of every day there are always more books to the genre, and it's growing and it's bringing more people in, and they go back and discover the the kind of existing popular books and things like that. So, yeah. You know, I think it, it, it's just a case that it's kind of right place at the right time, almost. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if it was last time we spoke. It was one of the because this is the sixth book we've done in this series. So yes. It's hard to re- yeah. it's hard to remember which chat, and we've had a chat after each one, and it's hard to remember which one, but. When we first started doing audiobooks together, which was about three years ago now, believe it or not. Yeah, it's a long time now, yeah. You had a day job, and then on one of the chats, you said you'd turned Mm full-time. So has life changed since you went pro? Um, Not, aside from obviously working from home, which is what I was doing anyway in the old job. um, Not really. Like I said, I still try and treat it as, as a job. You know, I get up at a certain time, I do a certain number of hours, you know, I sit down and I do the work. I take a lunch break. You know, I think if I didn't, it'd be very easy to fall into a trap of where you just don't do anything. You put it off and you put it off, and you just wouldn't do it, would you? So I think you need to at least treat it like that. Otherwise, nothing's going to get done. I know what you mean. Um, the 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 tricky thing is, I work from home now as well, as, uh-huh. as you know, as with recording audio books, is getting the people around you to realize that you're not actually at home. You are at work and work happens to be at home because you'll suddenly get asked to do stuff and you're like, no, I've got work to do. Mm -hmm. And (laughs) communicating that to the people around you, I think is one of the biggest challenges of the time management because they think, well, you, they can just ask you to go out and pick something up for them or do this. No, I'm supposed to be working. (laughs) I've got people who need stuff done here. I've got deadlines I'm working to. Yeah. So, Yeah. yeah, but, uh, yeah, it feels like now time is relative, especially when you're, you're busy. But it feels like this sixth book, the Diverger book, it feels like there was a bigger gap between this one and book five. Now, is that my imagination or is that real? Did this one? No, come it, out this of- one took a little bit longer. I think it took yeah. a little bit longer to kind of get things formed and what I wanted to do with it and kind of where I wanted to go. I think that's just inevitable. You know, when you're writing books, some of them are going to take longer than others just because it takes you a bit sometimes to think like, well, okay, well, I'm going to do X or Y and how am I going to have that plan out down the line? Um, I think once it comes together, it kind of, for me, it tends to go quite quickly, but it's about kind of getting to that starting point where you're ready kind of, right, okay, and, you know, write the book and off you go. I think of all the books that we've done so far, I enjoyed recording this one the most because of the character of the Diverger, because, well, 
in the book, he, he comes from a land down under. So mm -hmm. I don't know if you were thinking this, but I made him an Australian. Yeah, that, that was... That and he was seemed kind to be written in Australian slang as well. So I went... Yeah, there. yeah, that was, that was kind of the... The kind of basis of the like the people and culture in this book, the the diverger, is is kind of a it's a pun, <laughs> if I'm honest, because the diverger is the old Norse word for dwarf. Oh, right. And dwarves yeah. tend to be you know in yeah Lord of the Rings and stuff. They're Welsh and they're Scottish and certain things like that. But the, the idea that dwarfs live underground, so they're literally from the land down under. Yes. <laughs> in my head, it's like they work quite well as Australians, I think. <laughs> I think the accent suits them kind of how they are. And I thought that was, that was kind of everything sprang from that, kind of the region of the world they explore in this book is very kind of almost a fantastical take on like Australia and the outback and the kind yeah. of creatures and things that you might find there. Um, yeah. Because I thought that was a fun thing to explore rather than, Obviously, fantasy settings tend to be quite um, European set. You know, it's yes. uh, essentially they're, they're the Shire is England, right? Like, it, so yeah. the idea of taking yeah. quite a different part of the world and being like, well, yeah. what is that like in a fantasy setting was, was quite a fun thing to do. Yeah, it works quite well, you know, with Australia actually being Southern Hemisphere. So being, you know, everything round the wrong way, you know, summer when it's winter and winter when it's yeah, summer yeah and, and you know and the time difference it's day when it's night is night when it's, it's whatever it did actually set it apart from from the worlds that you well Akamida and and uh and the cities we've explored before in the last uh, five books and i i really enjoyed it i because i lived in australia for six and a half years and even became a citizen so it was uh, it was good to, to to use that to my advantage, um, for you know because there are other characters in it. I mean, the Diverger is the main one, but he's got uh, he's got those kangaroos that, uh, yeah. that you know that are his uh, his, his mortal enemy, and so I could uh, I could use a bit of the vibe of people I'd bumped into in Australia, and uh, I was lucky enough as well. I, I I started out when I first moved there, lived in Sydney for a bit, but then we moved out into the country because I was in radio and I. When I started out in radio, I couldn't get a job in Sydney. I had to go out to the bush. So there was a lot. I met a lot of characters along the way, and and I, it was useful to tap into them too. And so it was. And I think that's why I enjoyed recording it. Uh, I looked forward to the sessions when I was recording it more so. Than, I mean, I enjoyed um, recording all of them, and they're great tales as well. How far can they go? Six books so far. Uh, yeah, in, in in my head, there's there is kind of a a point where I think there's kind of like a natural conclusion. I, I think probably roughly 10, these right, things tend okay. to change as you write it, but I think <laughs> right. kind of roughly around there, there's still some things I want to kind of get through before we kind of get into the kind of the, the end of the, the story, the kind of where things end up, but there's definitely a couple left in the series. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So we've passed the halfway point then. Yes. Yeah. Yes. yes. Well, again, provided things pan out, you know, I work with books and you, know, you get your George R.R. mind. Oh, it's only one more novel and it's like <laughs> six. So, it's, it's, you know, you never know. Do you? Yeah. Yeah. And how have the original characters changed? You know, how, how has Gareth and, and um, Saka and, and the, how do you think they have changed? I mean, the dynamic between them has, has certainly evolved. But how do you yeah. think the the characters themselves have changed through the series as as they've reacted to the experiences they've been having? Yeah, I think that like especially like Gareth, for example, when you when you first meet him, he's very kind of bitter about his, his situation and he wants to prove himself otherwise. And as kind of these things have happened, and he's learned more about the way the universe works and the the kind of big quest that they're on, he's kind of a bit, become a bit more humble, I think, and realizes yeah. that ultimately you know it's not about him it's about making the world to rights almost and the mm -hmm. same thing with magda she's very you know the star she's a goddess and she's got that kind of hubris that she would have and as that's gone on she's kind of that's kind of bled away because again she's realized there's something more important than her own ego that needs to be be dealt with and i think it's a similar thing with kind of the other the other characters you know they've become, they've become more and more involved with these different kind of world changing events and you know what they've been doing they've kind of realized that their own personal problems aren't aren't as big as deal as they think they were mm -hmm. um and so yeah i think they just become more of a more of a team at the start they're just they're, they're kind of 
a little bit antagonistic sometimes and now yes. they, they've been through so much that yes um you know they're all driving towards one goal now yeah and they, they it's a clear goal they're basically trying to save the world uh, yeah. that they're on yeah and so it's an important goal and i i would agree yeah that that really comes across in the writing um I do like the way, though, they are they are more as a bonded team now than individual people trying to work each other out. They they, they know each other so much better. Mm -hmm. But I also feel that Sarkarin is winding up... Um, uh, what, what's her name? Uh, he's winding her up even more than ever. Um, Amelda. He's winding yeah. up Amelda. She... she she, she was putting up with him for a while, but now now I sense more eye rolling. Perhaps it actually, but she's almost enjoying being wound up by him. She's expecting him yeah. to irritate her, and uh, yeah. yeah. Whereas before she was very suspicious of him, but now I think she's accepted him. But he still gets on her nerves. <laughs> yeah, I think it's the difference between um, kind of how you could initially find somebody maybe irritating, but. When, you, when you're friends with someone, you can say things to each other and wind each other up in a way that you wouldn't do with a stranger. It's got a different kind of resonance yeah. to it, right? Yes. You know, it, I think that's it's kind of evolved into that at this point, yeah. Yes, we're much more polite with strangers. Like if a stranger yes. said, said to you, um, it's my birthday today, you would say, oh, well, congratulations and many happy returns. Whereas if a friend said it's my birthday today, you'd go, how old are you, old bastard? You yeah, know? yeah, exactly. We're much, more, we're much more polite with strangers than we are we're more than, than people we're, we're more familiar with. Yeah, um, it, it is a terrific book. And I didn't expect it to take this kind of a twist to put the, the, the kind of Australian thing on it. Because these... The worlds they've been to before have been very unfamiliar, mm -hmm. and maybe I'm a bit more familiar with Australia than than uh, people who haven't lived there. And so for me, it was a familiar world that we were tapping into, even though it is a fantasy world based on a familiar yeah. world. Yeah, and uh, I I I really like that. So what happens in the next book? Do you know yet? I've got an inkling. Um, it's obviously, without spoiling too much, kind of a, more of a direct continuation of this particular part of the story than maybe other books. Well, the other books tend to be kind of self-contained to an extent, right? They go to a, a certain place and have a particular adventure and progress the main plot. I think the next yeah. one is more of a, a direct link to what happens in this book. You know, more Okay, well, a continuation maybe. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because there were a few loose ends there. You always mm -hmm. leave... A few things uh, still to be said and a few things uh, still to be worked out along the way. Because we really don't know if they're going to achieve their major quest, uh, mm -hmm. the big quest. We really do not know which way that's going. Also, there's the little the relationship happening between Magda and Gareth now, which is quite interesting. I was uncomfortable with that at first, you know, um, but uh, because they're from such different you know, one's an ex-goddess and the other one is a bloke who's just stumbled his way there after buying a dodgy games console in a car park. You know, yeah. they, they've nothing in common. And I'm thinking, ooh, I don't know. But uh, I do actually think they could be soulmates now, having read more into it and seen where they're... Where did that idea yeah. come from? I, th I think it's the idea that they, these are two people who've been in this kind of adventure from the start. And they both, at the start, have their entire life, their entire worldview completely upended um you know kind of magda learns about like what it means to be a goddess and you know the kind of dark truth to that gareth finds himself in a completely different reality and it's about like these two people who have just got to find a way to to live and i think inevitably that's going to create some kind of bond mm -hmm. you know even, even if you'd have nothing in common at the start when you're both thrown into the same problem essentially and have to work together i think that's going to forge something that yeah. kind of only becomes stronger the more time you spend with them, I think. Yeah, I also like the way that, that Magda is almost a... She's uncomfortable with the fact that she was once worshipped and when, mm -hmm. you know, statues show up of her, she's not she's not comfortable with that. And I like that 
you know, because if statues showed up of Sarka and you'd never hear the end of it, he'd love it, no. you know. But she's um, she's a bit more humble and a bit more reserved. And that dynamic works so well as well with, with him, just chucking him in there as a lightning rod every now and again. Um, I, I, I reckon that really does work. They are a hell of a team. Have you ever any other plans for this? Because I think it would make a great movie series. Goodness me. Oh, um... <laughs> anyone's ever interested they're willing to contact me <laughs> peter uh, jackson you know where tracy gregory is and if you don't i'll tell you yeah i mean uh oh it could go big i mean it'd be obviously be easier to animate but i think as a live action it'd work much much better i think it costs a lot of money <laughs> yeah it'd be so. cheaper to, <laughs> to animate it yeah but no it, it no you would charge them a lot of money oh well yes <laughs> I think the problem is it would cost them the studio a lot of money to make it. Yeah, because yeah, um, yeah, shooting on location not that easy considering the locations are, have been have come out of your head. So you'd have to change yeah. Earth to look like um, another world. Yeah, it is great though, and uh, I had no idea when we set out on this journey when because we I'd done. I'd done a couple of books for you before, I don't know, before we started this series. But yes. I thought this was just going to be another one like the other couple. And then it turned into this series and the, the sales are just so good and there's a real fan base for it. And yeah. Uh, yeah, it is just really lovely to be involved with something that is such a success, but it's such a... There's such ripping yarns, the, the tales, and you never know what's going to happen. But all you know is it's not going to be easy for them. Whatever they set out to do, you're going to put stuff in their way <laughs> that they have to deal with. It is just great. And how did you find the experience of turning this one into an audio book? Oh, easy as always, Graham. It's always a pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what I like to hear. A satisfied customer. That is good. Yeah. No, it is very, very good. But thanks again for choosing me to be a narrator on this. And long may it continue. It's been just a wonderful journey to be on with you. And, you know, I, as you know, just over three years ago, I was a radio presenter and program director of a radio station in London, and I decided, well, I got fired, and I was uh, forced to make a choice, and I decided to get into audiobooks, and now I love it, and I will not go back to radio. And your book is one of the, or your series of books is one of the reasons for that, because uh, it is so much fun um, bringing these stories to life. They're so well written. They're great stories. This one is called Diverger. They're the Goblin Summoner series. You should check them out. They are not in a bundle just yet. You have to get them individually. So uh, if I'll put a link in the description to Amazon where you can download the Diverger as an audio book and check it out and continued success. And thanks again for choosing me, Tracy Gregory. Thank you, Graham. <laughs>